It's time for Twit This Week in Tech. Loic Lemur is here. Alexia Totsis from uh, TechCrunch. David Prager from Revision 3. And Clayton Morris from Fox & Friends. We're all going to talk about Windows 8, the pros and the cons, and a whole lot more. Stay tuned. Twit is next. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Audio bandwidth for This Week in Tech is provided by the new Winamp for Android, featuring wireless sync and one-click iTunes import. Now with free daily music downloads and full-length CD listening parties. Download it for free at winamp.com slash Android. Video bandwidth for Twit is provided by Cashfly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. This is Twit, This Week in Tech, episode 319, recorded September 18th, 2011. The desktop is dead. This Week in Tech is brought to you by Go to My PC. Download the free Go to My PC app and work from anywhere, anytime, right on your iPad. And enter to win a free iPad by sending a tweet with hashtag TwitFreeiPad now through September 22nd. Visit GoToMyPC.com for your free 30-day trial. Promo code TWIT. And by Squarespace.com, the fast and easy way to create a high-quality website or blog. For a free trial and 10% off your new account for six months, go to Squarespace.com and use the offer code TWIT9. And by Audible.com. Sign up for the Platinum Plan and get two free books. Go to audible.com slash twit2. And don't forget to follow Audible on Twitter. User ID audible underscore com. It's time for Twit This Week in Tech, the show that covers the, uh, the week's tech news. A great, uh, as usual, great panel assembled. I'm going to start with a guy who's not here. He's actually in his sauna today. <laughs> Clayton Morris. <laughs> God, it's getting hot in here. <laughs> Foxandfriends.com. It's so cold in Upper uh, Pennsylvania that he actually yeah. has to live in a sauna. I have a I have a little water boy. Can you put some more water on your coals, please? Thanks. Clayton Fox and Friends, of course. And you just launched what Grizzly Adams Productions? What is that? Grizzlyproductions.tv. You know, we had all of our shows for four years scattered across uh, all these disparate lands, and we finally, after months and months of working on it, uh, we built it on the backs of Squarespace, by the way, and fantastic. Oh, that's so, nice to know. Productions.tv. Yeah, we have all of our shows now living under one roof, and it's still in beta, so. Hey, all of the listeners of Twit, go there and rip us apart. Tell us what we need to fix. We're still uh, we're still working on it and tweaking <clears> things. And I didn't realize you had so many shows. This is great. A lot of parenting shows, and we just launched our new sports show. So if you're uh, twice a week, if you're into sports, this guy's like Rain Man. He's like a walking encyclopedia. Paul, Paul Roberts. Yeah, Paul Roberts. Yeah. He's, he's great. So, so thanks for having me. I always love being on That's the show. That's great. And then, and I know Natalie's doing the Mommy Beta, which is great. Yeah, four moms get together and they kibitz and complain about what it's like to be new moms. Oh, <laughs> never so heard good that stuff. before. Yeah, daddy so on board. Stuff, is that yeah. you, daddy on board? Yeah, that's me and my pal Mike, and we—that's uh, where most of the complaining comes in. So if you're if you're a, if you're a new dad and you wanna you wanna join the uh, revolution, we get people all the time who say, "Just found your show. I'm about to be a dad in three oh. weeks." And I need, we, oh. trust me, we tell it like it is. We tell you what furniture not to build if the wife orders it. Oh, the and, Ikea. You know, oh, God. Right, or some assembly required. Yeah, no. That's a bunch of, that's no. a bunch of bunk. We if, tell you what not to build. If it comes with one of those little L-shaped uh, hexagonal wrenches, no. <laughs> An Allen wrench? An Allen Run away. Wrench. No. What are they talking about? The Ikea, the Ikea tools that always ship with the Ikea. That's furniture. it. Yeah, that's that's it. David Prager, by the way. Yeah. David Prager from that's Revision it. 3. Uh, sitting next to him, Loic Lemur from Seismic and LeWeb, which is coming up in December. We're excited to be part of that. That's yes, a lot of tweet fun. at LeWeb. Tweet, tweet at LeWeb. What, how do you call it? That's tweet good. I Paris? like it. Twit in Paris. I thought Twit in Paris. Okay. A Twit in Paris. Yeah, so you're going to have your own studio. <laughs> That'll be good. I'm wait. so excited. Yeah, that's going to be great. And Alexia Tsotsis is also here from... Hey uh, are you still at TechCrunch? I'm still at TechCrunch. Okay, Crunch. just checking because... <laughs> you, <laughs> you, ne you never know. <laughs> um... Wow, I just you know we're not going to spend a lot of time talking about TechCrunch. Um, it's just really half an hour, right? Because it's I'm sure it's boring to everybody except those of us in the tech industry, uh, tech journalism industry, who are fascinated, can't get enough of this. But just from your point of view, how's things going? Are you are you comfortable? Are you is everything all right? 
Well, I was on vacation for... Smart. <laughs> yeah, I know. I might go Smart. on another one. Uh, I was on vacation for the beginning of this, and so I came back really calm, and you know, I spent time with my 90-year-old grandmother. Oh, that's neat. In, so, in Greece. In Greece. So I have, I have a different perspective because, you know, my mom asked me last week, she's like, what's a blog? Yeah. And I'm like, oh, it's, you know, it's like a newspaper, but it's online. She's like, can anyone publish anything they want to a blog? <laughs> she doesn't really know what you do, do you? No, she doesn't know what I was like, well, you know, technically they can, but it's not, it's not that simple. So my, I, I have a different perspective. I, I really love tech news, and I think that anything that makes tech news more entertaining and uh, reaches a wider audience is a good thing. Uh, you know, TechCrunch is going through its stuff right now, and it, we've definitely made it interesting for people to read about. No kidding. Yeah. Were, were there a lot of memos flying? I mean, you come back and there's like 800 <laughs> memos and your conflicting memos. Paul well, Carr saying, don't listen to Eric. Eric saying, don't listen to Paul. I mean, we, basically what you guys saw is what we saw. It all took place on the blog. Yeah. And there was no secrets. Yeah, there was no secrets. And... We didn't see very much internally. We saw, or right. I didn't, maybe other people did, but you know, a lot of it. Well, TechCrunch is distributed, too. Eric's <laughs> in New York. You're out here. Everybody's all over the place, right? And we're pretty much independent. Right. Like it's, a, it's a group of independent journalists right. trying to break news. J journalist, you said? Uh, oh, yes, that's I'm interesting. Sorry. I'm sorry. I, <laughs> I think I she actually, said journalist. I, I actually, <laughs> that was lazy of me. A, a group of independent writers. Oh, I, I actually bloggers. Think the, bloggers. I think the word journalist is just so wrought with BS that... Like, it, I don't like using it. So we're a group of in, independent writers who cover technology, who have WordPress c credentials and can publish onto the blog. And we coordinate so we don't overlap on right. stories. But for the most part, we're on our own, which yeah. is the great thing about TechCrunch. Yeah, and, and it has a great voice. Um, and I think that, you know, you were very, uh, Loic, you were, you were defending Mike. Mike, yeah, and, Mike was I, an early investor in Seismic, we should point out. <clears throat> yeah, well, you, you know, I, I, of course, as many people there has been so many posts around TechCrunch and Mike more about Mike probably than TechCrunch actually that I um, and there were like I, I think it was just too much so I had to put this blog post where I explained Mike was an early investor in Seismic and actually I wasn't complaining about that but what what you get as an investor with Mike as an investor is generally a lot of trashing online he wasn't he wasn't most, overly kind to no seismic. most of the posts were actually uh pretty negative and yeah. that, and that's fine he didn't complain i i was expecting those basically but I, I was just saying that um trying to say which was difficult in that post that um i i don't think he's bs i think you have to like him or hate him or there is no in between like he is and I, I think he's just, you know, one of the centers of technology. And whatever he does, he will continue. And you don't have to think about him as a journalist, you know. And, and people are saying he's BS and so on. You know, it doesn't matter. That's not the point. The point <laughs> is, do you like reading him and the controversy and the conversation or not? But um, he matters. And um, I always, you know, took him as, when I talked to him, I was saying, are you the friend, the investor, or the blogger today? And, and you never know. And you never know. Yeah. He actually said it's always blogger first. What happens to TechCrunch now? I think, the background, now? I think the, the background of the story is pretty important because if you look at what, a, who calls himself a blogger and who calls himself a journalist, and then like some of the environment that's, be create, then that's been created by uh, writers on TechCrunch being personalities and people being interested in following a personality, obviously I think, you know, Arrington, are, uh, the, the strongest personality at TechCrunch, and <clears throat> part of his value is people being interested in what he thinks and what he wants to say. And one of the things I've always said about Arrington that I think is good is I've never heard, I've never seen him to lie about anything. I've always seen him to be truthful. But then the big controversy and the question was I don't think that's some the of the, case, by the some way. of the traditional, <laughs> okay. yeah, some of the traditional <laughs> rules on what journalism is and what it means on being able to have a platform to promote the things that you want. And one of the things that Michael says is, I'm going to talk about what I want, and no one's going to stop yeah. me from talking about what I want. And I think there's a lot of people that do respect that. And there's arguments to be made you know, around that, especially when you start looking at you know investment funds and where people are putting money and what you can say about a company, not say about it, or decide to say you know something positive or negative, or not at all. Huge respect about being able to say what you really think. And Mike does this, Paul Carr did this on TechCrunch, okay. where he, he gave his resignation, you know. And I think there is, it's great. We live in a world where everybody is like, so fakely nice, like they don't tell you He's what they really... He's not fakely nice. No, that's what I mean. That. At least, you know, you have a, <laughs> that's something you have a truth, right? I'll grant you that. Clayton, you asked a question. Go ahead. I'm sorry. We, we... 
No, you're gonna, no, you're gonna have, yeah, you're gonna have asking... a hard time there in the maple sugar house, because you know. Uh, this, but it just Is jumps. You're the, 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 the in the wood. How's it going? Um, <laughs> what happens to TechCrunch now? I mean, this was all playing out. It was interesting to read, obviously, all the back and forth online about this, but. Leo, I think to your point, even before the show started, you know, is this inside the Beltway talk? And really, do, do most people pay attention to this outside of the tech world? You know, what's going on, the sort of back and forth? And if you read this, and you read the back and forth, and the way it was funny to look at it, how it was all laid out on Tech Meme the other day, right? At the top, you had, oh, yeah. it was you had Eric's comments below the that. Paul's, you had and then M.G. Siegler's. And, and oh, my God. It was God. all boom, yeah. boom, boom. Yeah. But, you know, what's funny is this happens in every office. But yeah, this, but is, this doesn't know, happen in public, exactly. I think you're right. Right. I mean, this is the same yeah. thing that you know, he said this, he said that. And, uh, but my question is, what happens to TechCrunch now? Well, I think we're going to focus on scoops and not digs for the next couple of weeks, at least. We've got F8 coming up. and The I'm big sure, Facebook conference. <laughs> big we'll Facebook ask you about that in a second. Yeah. And I'm sure there'll be a couple of announcements there that aren't like <laughs> internal staff more, fighting. more people <laughs> leaving? But... To MG's point, how, though, I thought it was I interesting. His <laughs> Alexia, you're not leaving, right? You're going to stay. Not, I, you know, I am not leaving. Not right now. Probably. Not if you're today. staying. I'd like I'm to curious. do better work at TechCrunch. Is what I like to do, but. TechCrunch is a great opportunity, especially right now, because it is have, does have a lot of attention. I think AOL is going to be very uh, anxious to justify its purchase of TechCrunch, right? Um, and uh, it's been only a year. And they also want to prove that, that TechCrunch can succeed without uh, succeed with Mike, Mike Arrington. And they still have great, and Paul Carr, and they've got great writers still like you, MG. Um, I think uh, Sarah, when's Sarah come back? Soon? In four months. I think. She's going to come back for, hmm. wait, she's going to come back for Disrupt Beijing okay. for a little bit. I know, <clears throat> with her baby, with Eli. But she tweeted that if the winner of TechCrunch Disrupt was that Israeli company, she would quit. I think people, I, you know, I think tweet. she was joking. Oh, really? Okay. I, I mean, from what I see, people it wasn't take stuff too serious. Like, I think Paul Carr made fun of a writer, Jack McKenna, which is Arrington's pen name, in a, in a blog. He, like, he made fun of a writer, and then there was an Italian publication that... Picked it up. Picked it up as, as not a joke. As so, news. So people take this <laughs> way too seriously. With departures at TechCrunch, are they hiring what writers? Yeah, we're hiring writers. They are? And that those hires are made by the editor? Ariana, probably, right? No, the, no, who's, the, editor no, the editor is of Eric, Eric, Eric Schoenfeld. Eric Schoenfeld is the editor, but who makes the hires? I think Eric, Eric? Schoenfeld. Okay. What does Ariana know about tech? Well, I think you're right. That's careful. <laughs> you're talking about your boss here. Yeah, well, she, is she I the boss? Don't that's think what that's she what's not clear. Cares that much. No. No. If she's smart, she'll, uh, as Barry Diller said, she'll just let TechCrunch be TechCrunch and not. I mean, he, Barry was really. It seemed scathing. like that's what AOL was doing. At least for a couple of months, it seemed like it was the same old TechCrunch. And then, not only until two weeks ago, did we learn that that was not the case. And I'm sure it had to do with you know the raising of the funds, which AOL put money into. Well, if you go Does to Tech, it change though? If you go to Tech Meme, the top two stories today are are two TechCrunch stories by oh, MG yes, and Matt Burns. Go. You break that's stories, good. and it's that's good. Keep and I stories. I just the only reason I, I think it's an important issue is I I, I feel for uh, readers, and viewers. I'll include our viewers as well who have to decipher who is in whose pocket, whose objective. Yeah. And I guess you've always had to decipher that, and you just have to use your judgment and watch what people say and, and judge from that whether you can trust what they say, right? I mean, you just Does the product, though, get watered down? I mean, that was MG's point, right? That it would be, that, that there's a possibility that it could become like CNET. Welcome to mainstream media. The product always gets watered down. <laughs> I mean, but that's the edginess. That's what people turn to TechCrunch for. That's why I read it. And you worry that that product that gets diluted, and MG's point about CNET then being watered down, not the edgy it's, property it, that it, it once all was. Starts, it all starts with the founder and the great vision, and then it goes... You, you, every startup starts with the founder, a great vision, and then it's a process of watering down from then on. Isn't it? It's very rare that the startup can maintain that unique flavor that it had on day one. Yeah, well, there's Apple, there's... That's right, and that's exactly, that's the exception that proves the rule, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, there are very few. In fact, I look at Facebook, right. I want to talk about Facebook a there's little bit, because yeah. I, I think Facebook has started to become watered down, but we'll talk about that in a second. Huh. I want to talk about Windows 8, because that's really the big story of the week, and I didn't want to get sidetracked by the uh, tech crunch, but we kind of, because Alexia's here, we should, and because you're such a, a defender of Mike, we should, <laughs> <laughs> I had to bring it up. Do you remember when 30 minutes of every show was about Twitter? I remember that. Yeah, yeah, those days, fortunately, over. For the most part. Was that 2008? Yeah. Twitter is no longer the yeah. thing it was. Let's take a break. We're going to come Ew. back. I want to show you Windows 8. In fact, Loic, I'm really pleased. He was at Build uh, and brought back this Samsung tablet that they gave all the developers. Uh, and we can't wait to play with it. So we'll talk about it. And what you think of Windows 8 in just a second. But before we do that, 
I would like to talk a little bit about go to my PC. Speaking of tablets, go to my PC now supports the iPad. That means you can use the iPad to access your office computer, Windows or Mac, anywhere. Just this lightweight thing you carry around. You log into your go to my PC account. It's completely secure. It's almost it's a VPN in effect. Uh, secured link back to your office, and there's your there's your Windows machine. You can send and receive email, run any program, access any network resource, do anything you want with your iPad or your Mac or your PC. It really is the best way to do remote access. Go to my PC by Citrix. I've been using it for years, and I am such a fan. And now that now that I can do it on the iPad, I'm even happier. No IT help is required. Setup is a snap. Go to uh, the uh, go to mypc.com on the desktop that you want to access first. Click the Try It Free button. Use the offer code TWIT. Just type that in and uh, set up that 30-day free account. Now it's on your computer. Now you go to the App Store on the iPad and uh, just download the free Go to My PC app, and you'll be and you'll be operating. You'll be up and running in minutes. No IT help. Nothing. Just very simple. And by the way, we are going to give away a free iPad right now. Would you like to win an iPad? All right, so here's how it's going to work. I want you to tweet with the hashtag TwitFreeiPad. Going? Okay, I'm doing it right now. You can't do it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Employees of Fox Networks and their affiliates are not allowed. <laughs> Pound TwitFreeiPad through September 22nd. And, uh, and if you tweet with that hashtag, uh, they'll be uh, looking at all those tweets through September 22nd. And then next week on Twit, we'll announce the winner of an iPad 2. So how about that? And then, of course, don't forget to go to, go to mypc.com for your free 30-day trial. Promo code TWIT. We thank Citrix for their support. And actually, here's the question. I, actually, I want you to answer a question. I didn't, I didn't. In the tweet, answer this question. Which file? This is a little research uh, that Citrix wants to do. Which file or program on your home or office computer would be most helpful to access on your iPad? What's the program that you would use, go to my PC, to access on your mm -hmm. iPad? So answer it. You could just be one word answer. Microsoft Outlook or whatever. <clears throat> Put the hashtag TwitFree iPad in there and you'll be entered to win a new iPad 2 from Go to My PC. Details and contest rules are where? Do we know? Somewhere. Somewhere. <laughs> Somewhere <laughs> out there. <laughs> Probably. Have um, you seen the show notes? <laughs> they are. I think they're in the show yeah, notes. Yeah. Thank you, David Prager. That's why you're the man in charge of Revision 3. <clears throat> I just know that when you do contests, you got to have you rules. you got to have rules. Actually, do no you, purchase necessary. Do you want a podcast? I guess you can't. Oh, you sure. have to say no purchase I mean, necessary. There's, especially Otherwise, there's it's a lottery. rules like uh, if it's more than $600, the prize, you got to follow additional rules or something. Because you have to give. Because we're, we're, we're not radio. David that says something. Radio stations. I mean, when we did it on radio, you'd have to say, rules available at the office, come by and get it. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, there was all this stuff, but I don't know if you have to do that. And I know that when. Does anybody we, regulate us at all? Uh, Absolutely. The, yeah. the bigger the bigger yeah. the medium grows, the more viewers Twit oh, gets, the more crap. viewers Revision Three gets. <laughs> Are you under the blogger re regulations also? Who, who regulates blogs? Oh, there's some FCC regulation. No, where there's not. To, is, FCC. Isn't there, isn't there FTC some? probably. FTC, yeah, where you have to uh, disclose if you have taken money from a product when you're writing about the product. Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't I know that. I think so. Huh. I don't think Arrington follows those rules. Yes, he does. He's disclosing. You know, it's yes, interesting. Does, it's actually interesting because Schoenfeld... Oh, here we go. More All right. No, no, no. Okay, I'm not going to... Arrington time. I mean, he's fascinating. It, I, that's exactly it. And it's really good for clicks. It's really here's what and, I love about Arrington. He he managed to bring all this attention to the blog and then deflect that or deflect that attention. All the negative to, attention deflected to himself. And, and then the, blog, the positive it's all attention to yeah. the startups that we write Brilliant. about on the blog. Well, you should right. see the thread I got as comments on my blog post. You know, I got some negative attention too. <laughs> it's amazing how many trolls you guys carry behind you. You know. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. I like that it's all Facebook comments, or at least the fact that they try to make it so that you have to have a you have to log yeah, you, on to Facebook. But you have to have an, I mean, I don't know if I like the fact that it has to be Facebook, but I like the, I like the fact that you can't just man. be anonymous. Yeah. So I'm going to mean, go look at the difference between the comments on something like YouTube. It's ridiculous. Oh, YouTube's horrible. It's useless because of but that. But Facebook has, I mean, also the, the, the part of the thing about the personalities writing these articles is that you get active discussions in the comments. 
which I think is I agree. is fun because you don't see that on a lot of do you Google Plus? watered down pub publications. Do you Google Plus? I did a lot. I don't very much anymore. However, I don't think the reason that I don't use it. I think most of it's because I'm so busy and I haven't been able to decide to adopt it. I love it. But I think it's pretty cool. I, I love it too. I used to use I it, love but it. now you know, I don't have time. See, Leo, yeah. it's fashionable these days. You're, you're, you're like me. You're out of fashion on this. It's fashionable these days to say, no, I stopped using Google+. Plus. I, I hear that I'm this week. It's and fashionable. I'm saying it because I actually stopped using but it. <laughs> no, I didn't say you, Alexia, in person. Oh. No, there was nothing people, personal. There is a lot of But there is a there lot, is of, a lot of people. Oh, and no, I, I've I think, moved on. I think it's normal. You go up. If you're yeah. a social network, you launch it. You go up, and then there is a peak. You go down, and now you get the real users. Let's let's talk about an old company, a mainline computing company. They're called Microsoft, and they Did had something. a big conference yes. this week called Build. It was a, it was the first Build conference. They're combining their developers conference, PDC, with their hardware conference, WinEC, with their web conference mix, mix into one massive thing in Anaheim. And, of course, they did something that Google's been doing all along at their developers' conferences. They handed out hardware running the new operating system. Steven Sanofsky, who's running the Windows 8 development team, uh, is, became quite famous at Office for being a straight shooter, not saying anything until it was so, re really being reliable. He's been blogging a lot about Windows 8. And one of the things, correct me if I'm wrong, but one of the things that's my understanding that St Steven said is, yes, understand that we are giving you a developer's preview. They did make it available to everyone. You can go to buildwindows.com and download it. Anybody can, and millions have. He said that, but he also said, this is the final version in terms of OS. Don't expect us to take a lot of feedback and change this a lot. And so normally when I see a developer's preview, I probably would just say, well, there it is. It's a preview. It's probably going to change a lot, especially with Microsoft Windows. You know, remember what we saw with Vista when it first, when it was Longhorn, and then what they finally came out with, it changed a lot. Mm -hmm. But have they told, look, you're a developer, so you have the tablet. I'm not myself a developer. But My team, I, I yeah. lead a developer, yeah, a and, small and one. And they gave you, so this is the tablet. Yep. Thank you for bringing this. This no, is of the course. Samsung that they uh, handed out. And um, one thing you immediately notice is it is snappy as heck. This thing moves along. This is look a at look at that. I love this one. Oh. <laughs> what, what is there any really staggering at all? <laughs> oh, snappy. you need to be in an app. So see, you do this. Oh, look at that. That's cool. This is how you switch from app to app. And then you can split screen. So see now, I'm it, gonna do if half I do and just half. This. See. Oh, Oops. I missed. How do I do it that? It just goes oh, to show go. you. Oh, look at really that. Oh, so you now it's outside of the box. So you can have TechMeme here and TechCrunch here. That's what they've, <laughs> that's what they've been saying, uh, Clayton, is that the Windows reimagined. That's the tagline for this. Um, and it really is. And you know that they're not phoning it in here. I mean, this is, this is, this is not a copycat. Mm -hmm. of, uh, as they were saying, other tablets in the market, as if we don't know who they're talking about. Uh, but this is really, uh, th you know, th and this is what I loved about Windows Phone. I mean, Windows Phone is exciting. Sadly, I've never seen one in the wild, but... I have, and I, it's, you know what, this is almost identical to Windows Phone. That's what's interesting. Right. If you turn this on its side and shrunk it down, yeah, it does that's a lot like Metro, it. that's the Windows Phone <laughs> interface. And, I, you know, I'll grant you this. This is a great tablet interface. The problem is... As far as I can tell, this is also the start menu on the desktop version of Windows. And that's where I'm a little bit more worried. I've got it running here in emulation on my Macintosh. I don't have touch capability, so everything I'm going to have to do now, I'm going to do with the mouse. But they've designed, they've, it seems like they've been vocal about designing it to be able to be interfaced with the touch screen and without a touch screen. They want, they a, want the same kind of user experience. What it seems to be is one UI to, to serve them all. So, mm -hmm. it's, so in other words, we're not going to care whether your tablet, desktop, laptop, phone, this is the UI, and I'm not sure that you can do that. I don't know if you can successfully. Uh, uh, can can you but apply you know, a tablet metaphor to a desktop computer? This is what Apple's trying to do with OS X Lion, and it's terrible. It's the same. It's the same. You know, I like Lion, so this is running on Lion, yeah. so I can swipe over and have different windows open. To me, this 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 is still a desktop metaphor uh, with some tablet-like features. This is the start menu. There is no more start menu in Windows 8. You can hack it, but then it really isn't Windows 8 anymore. This is the start menu now. In fact, even if I go uh, to the desktop, uh, well, they have a little desktop tile here. Um, this looks very much like the Windows 7 desktop until you click the start menu, and that's it. <laughs> does it? I'm curious. I mean, playing with it, does it translate? I mean, that's the question, right? Because taking that tablet and uh you know, I, I like lion as well but i there are stark differences and 
uh, going from you know gesture control to touch is a hugely that's that's a big leap, right? Going from just a four finger swipe on a trackpad uh, to actually touching icons, moving things around on a screen, uh, and as opposed to using a mouse to do it. I don't know that it translates between them, but it's still early. One of the big problems, though, is that this doesn't come out for for quite a while. So. Trying to gain market share, trying to gain traction in this space right now, which is moving at a clip, and you've got other you've got other competitors like Apple out there on the tablet space so far ahead of everyone else. Now wait a year for this to come out. I think Windows is woefully behind. Incidentally, uh, J Max asked me in the chat room, is this going to change how Office looks? And Microsoft has said, yeah, this is the interface for Office as well. Yeah. So this is this is the new ribbon. This is the ne your developer. Your team is developer. Um, do you uh, clearly on the tablet? This is this is good. I think this is the first decent tablet interface that's not Apple's. I, I think they're just betting on the fact that uh, the desktop as we know it is just going to go away. So, so you're, you know, focusing kind of on the past that this is all going to go away. So my we'll worry only about do touch. But, 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 see, this is where I worry for Microsoft because Microsoft's core business is business. Right. Where they are going to be using desktops. So, they may use tablets so, too. So but this is the perfect um, for the executive for, for the sales people. Staff. Yeah, but what about wonderful. the accountant? What about the yeah? I, oh my God! I walk around my office building. We've got what a thirty-five floor. You got the Wall Street Journal in my building. You've got all, and everyone is. I think they're still running, uh, and a lot of these computers still like uh, Windows two thousand and Blackberries. Um, oh, and Blackberries, yeah, a lot of Blackberries. Yeah, yes. lot of black I just could never see these individuals. Uh, with all due respect to a lot of them, I mean, they're they're you know they don't even know how to use cut and paste, uh, and and they're so used to that system that they're using. I just can't see them sitting there with a touch screen, uh, reaching out on one of those HP Touch Smarts. I think uh, it's flicking through happen. files. In, in, I just don't think it. it's going to happen. Oh, it'll be an iPad. Oh, though. but in, in ten years, HP this thing is going to cost two hundred dollars, well, and you're going to be able to apply all kinds of keyboard peripherals to it and attach it to external displays. And the fact that they cost the equivalent of two hundred dollars or so, you're going to be able to have the old accounting team at the Wall Street Journal be able to adopt it pretty quickly. So but you're saying I I'm asking the wrong question. I shouldn't be saying, how does this work on a desktop? I should that's be... That's the wrong question. That's the wrong question. Yeah. It really isn't about the desktop anymore. It's gone. Forget the desktop. It's dead. Gone. Nobody it's will use dead. it? Seven, using last, year, last year, they did... You're a writer. Are you going to write on a tablet? No, nope, no way. Not you need a keyboard. Why not? I mean, if it gets better, it's getting better, or you know, more and more to type on glass, and it recognizes words. Like for example, when I, I switch to oh, from English yeah. to French, for yeah. me it's great because I don't have to switch keyboard. So it switches for me, and it recognizes. Are we talking about using one of those like Acer Iconia tablet type? Taste. I mean, I just don't. I see mean, it. I'm I'm a tech blogger, and I'm still I've never written a blog post on a tablet, and I don't think I will. It seems until like it'd be I'm a lot of work to. typing yeah, on so glass. Have, that but you don't have to. You'll always, keyboard. Keyboard. To, you'll always be able to put it. I've, I've been on a plane, and there's a guy who hangs his iPad on the seat in front of him and pulls his little Bluetooth keyboard right. out and goes to, goes to town. But at that point, and I'm you would go to town like that writing an article. Sure, but at that point, but it doesn't mean that I'm going to go out of my way right now. Yes, I've got my. Well, I'd rather have like you know a MacBook Air, yeah, pretty exactly. soon. But I, I mean, well, I this think is this is to me better than an iPad. I don't carry the iPad around. I carry this around. This yeah. is light. It's easy. It's got a keyboard. And I think it really gonna... strikes me as strange when I see people with a an iPad and a keyboard. It's like, well, yeah, dude, I don't get it. Get a just, laptop. Just get a laptop. <laughs> I'll, I'll get a Mac that. <laughs> the Mauricio yeah, is, is holding up. Actually, that's the Logitech. That's the Zag uh, uh, case that that you put your iPad in, and it's a Bluetooth folding keyboard. It's actually very compact. Yeah, yeah the but you're not, notice you're not using that. You're using an i a MacBook. Yeah. All right. <laughs> now, for developers, your question, Leo. I think um, they are very excited. They are. Uh, one of the strengths. I wouldn't. I wouldn't discount the chances of Microsoft to succeed in this because if you look at Xbox versus Sony, they actually went huge That's after true. the fact, right? That's true. So yes, they're late, but they have proven in the past that they can come late, and they have you know hundreds of millions of users of Windows already. Well, and that's what concerns me because I think that those are that it, that is installed user base is the one that's going to be re most resistant to this. It's right. The but if, this, if this were a startup company, then I might be more excited. If you look at the developers, they will build. There are a lot of. Windows developers and the feedback I get from my team is that it's very easy to code for this thing. See, that's the key. And uh, that's the key. Yeah, they like it. They're very impressed. So you, well, I think you'll upgrades? see a lot of apps. I, but doesn't what about upgrades? Go ahead, from, Clayton. Go ahead. Wait. Well, I was just asking. What about upgrades? I mean, what do you say to the IT department? I'll pick up on the point that David was making because I think it's I think it's fascinating. You look at an IT department; they're sitting there scratching their head. Can we do an upgrade? I mean, where where does an IT department go from here? 
Well, the IT department, that's a good point too, because last year, uh, there was, I was at um, Dreamforce, the Salesforce conference, and last year, 70% of you know, people surveyed in IT were saying, never, we'll never let iPads in and tablets in enterprise. We don't want it. We don't support it. And that's last year. exactly why everybody loves it. And <laughs> now the IT 70, department hates it. <laughs> exactly. You know what happened? What, so I think the IT department is really, really a bad point because what happened is everybody brought their own tablets. Right. They bought their right. own. They did not they, expense. They them. made them move. And now Salesforce, I mean, they openly admit building their infrastructure on iPads. I no, mean, that's, that's, what's that's what I'm saying. Is the IT right. world now has had to? It's the, what they call the consumerization of enterprise. Is that there are so much? There is so much push of consumers going to their mm. office with an iPad that they now have to basically support it. And uh, and what I see is more and more salespeople, management, executives just using <coughs> iPads. So but it was the same thing with iPhones in our Samsung office. Thing, an iPad. So so what? I, look, that's an Apple device too. I love Apple. Don't get me wrong, but I, I, I wouldn't discount this as a big success. I think it will be a big success. We'll see. Ima imagine if you ha imagine if this was a, an Apple Windows. A, well, no, this was Windows 8 Windows as a 8. desktop. Imagine if you could flip that around and make it a touch if it screen. If were convertible, it, convert yeah. it into a tablet, but yeah. run the same operating system and use it in quote unquote tablet mode or desktop mm -hmm. mode with that's, the same operating that's system. That's possibly the real strength of this, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It would, you know, Microsoft's always had trouble with tablets. They, they it, it, it must have galled them after 10 years of pushing tablets that Apple comes in and mm -hmm. boom, just takes over. Yeah. Um, uh, but that's Bill Gates's war that he lost. Um, I don't know if Microsoft, the current Microsoft, worries so much about that. But uh, I've had a convertible Windows tablet for years and it was just very awkward and gainly because you put the touch on top of... Those are those compact ones, right? Yeah, and I have an HP, exactly, HP compact. But that's because you basically added touch as an afterthought to Windows. This feels more like Windows yeah. is a touch interface first and maybe a desktop, a distant second. People are pointing out in the chat room that uh, Windows underneath has been improved. There's a new kernel. There's a lot of rewriting on, that's gone on. But I don't know if users really are aware of that or care about that. Developers might care more about that. The user is going to be looking at the UI. I think there will be high-end machines, and you'll, the iPad will, will, be, will own as it already owns the high-end machines, like they do on the on the laptop, the, the high-priced, the high-end, high yeah, yeah high yeah, price, and yeah. and this is going to come very cheap. Alexia. I think you you'll you have so? very very low-cost devices, and the rest of the world will really like the low-cost devices. I'm curious, what incentives does Microsoft give to developers on this? Like, oh, I, we don't get anything. No. See, that's we a great point. I mean, we don't. That, we don't. And if Microsoft were smart here, wouldn't they come to developers and get a bunch of the key developers, you know, on on task and say, look, we're going to cut you a check. We know. We want you guys developing for Windows 8. We want to bring over some of these marquee developers, get them out there in front, so that when a year from now, it's a robust, it's a robust app store, it's a robust well, experience. To some, to, to they're, some they're degree, already... that's what's happening. I mean, this is this is the developer preview. They told developers you can develop now for this. It's not going to change too much. So this is what you're going to be developing for. And remember, Clayton, they don't have to give money to developers. They just have to say one word: 450 million. But you know what else? Install Windows users. If you're a developer, you care and it, whether it's malware or an office suite. That's what you care about, right? But How more than just developers, them? if you look at the app infrastructure, they're going to popular apps and popular. You know, they're, they're seeing what's the most popular Android and iPhone apps, and they're going after those people and saying, "Look, you need to make one for Windows 7." Well, you can bet Windows they'll be an angry bird. And those, on this. But, but those people are saying, "No, we, we don't want to." And so Microsoft right. is giving them money to do it. Exactly. Oh, so they are doing well, it. Absolutely. On, 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 on yeah. the phone. I have, a friend, yes. I have a friend who took $50,000 so he could put his app onto Windows. So they are doing it. Well, wait, 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 wait. The that's phone. the phone. Yeah. That's yeah, on, on the phone, I know. Okay. But I'm just saying, if you develop for the phone, yeah. you kind of have to develop. Because you go after the right. the no. Really no, 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 that's okay, what, so, so let me let me <laughs> remove my Microsoft fanboy hat for a second. There you go. There you go. No, it's not. That's a huge issue. If you're a developer, you built. we built a Windows Phone 7 app. Right. And it doesn't work there. It's not the same. Mm. So it's civilized. On the phone. Even though it's JavaScript and CSS and HTML5, you have to, you you have have to, to recode. That's that's a you know uh, a big issue. Well, I mean, now Microsoft if you build, but actually it's the same with Apple. Checks. It doesn't run the Mac either, right? So get out your checkbook, Microsoft. They 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 piss money away on Microsoft Kin concerts. <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys see the marketing material for the Kin? It was uh, we have yeah. it in our house. It's just like I love it. I I still have mine, and I think it's going to go to a museum. Can I tell you something? I actually recommended the Kin on the radio show a couple of weeks ago.
So. Some no, uh, and people are mocking me. But in fact, somebody called up and said, "I want a smartphone that's not a smartphone. I don't want to pay the data plan. I want a phone that I can text with, that I can do some of the smartphone features with. But I don't want such a complicated thing." The can is actually, if you don't have to pay the thirty dollars a month data plan, yeah. it's actually a great choice for our kids. For young people, for people who don't I want agree. to pay the money, I don't. I think I, the kid I was a great blasted, phone. I, I got blasted the same as you did. I I, rec I actually liked it. I I, I said the same thing. And uh, the mistake they made with the kid was the data plan. Right, but we, and and there, it, it, it just didn't seem complete too. And you couldn't like you couldn't use Twitter on. I mean, there were some weird things with it, but you couldn't get it anywhere. Right. I mean, can you still get it? Is no, it still you available? can. And the, the real problem is, Verizon, which sells it, doesn't push it ever. Because hmm. they don't make money on the data plan. So they, they, they say, oh, you don't want that. You want an iPhone because they want the extra 1000 or $2,000 they'll make over the life of the phone. That's a big difference. Everybody loves the weather app, by the way, on Windows hmm. 8. We've got a little beach. We got, That's great. We got, it moves. It moves. It moves. See the oh, water. God, Petaluma, sunny, 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 sunny. 90 we got degrees. 90 degrees, beautiful mm. weather. I was showing you, Leo, I really liked the writing apps. I, for, unfortunately, the, the pen, yes, there's a pen. People will laugh on that, mm. but there's a pen. It comes with a stylus? Yes, it's, optional, it's in the car somewhere. But see, I wrote... It's in the car. That's the problem. <laughs> In a nutshell, it's another problem. But try, try to do this on an iPad. I have um, I, I, it's you, very you could high ask, resolution. You could ask why you would try to do this on an iPad, though. But many people take notes like they don't want paper at all, and and then it recognizes right. it. Obviously, loaded sixty three. Yeah, strokes. well, that that was wrong. It cleared it up. <laughs> How do I type? No, I you need it. you need a pen, a stylus. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so it's in the car. Whatever. <laughs> that mm. works pretty well, actually. Well, if I uh, does it a special kind <clears> of pen. <throat> Can I use my time? I bet it is. Um, anyway, all right. So I was able to do this. I was able to do this with my mouse. And when you when you do a stroke, it does kind of it tidies it up. See that? It's kind of interesting. And now, if you go down, you'll have recognize it. Uh, go so it does recognize menu. It? I don't know. You do it with the mouse. Uh, I think you, you right click. Button. Oh, here you go. Okay. So now here you have recognize. Recognize. Oh, let's see if it recognizes. This is Windows 8. See, yeah. Loaded 20 strokes. Yeah. This is 83. If it recognizes that, then all the captchas are out the door. <laughs> um, well, let me write more clearly. I didn't realize it, it was doing that. Pretty well. You can do this on a trackpad on a yeah, on a MacBook Pro too, or a MacBook Air, right? That's Using you uh, ink. picture passwords. <laughs> let me try it. No, you can't really. Uh, yeah, I don't think this is designed to be used with a mouse, but... <laughs> yeah, I love how it cleans it up. So this is actually OneNote technology. This is something Microsoft's had for a while. Oops, let's not get out of there. I wonder um, how many new patents they had to file and combat to build this. Oh, God, don't get us started on software patents. You know, it's sexy. I like it, but I just worry that, I, that the, the, the main stay of Windows is people who really want this desktop, a smart menu... Uh-oh. Uh, join the expression blend. Oh, this is the development environment. Yep. This is interesting. This is free also, uh, which is pretty pretty cool. I, I think. And you see that now I have a taskbar at the bottom. If you, Eileen, if you take down the lower third, you'll see the taskbars here. This is very. They, this is very Windows 7 looking. It, I don't know it if is Windows change. 7, basically. Yeah. But what, what I think they want is it, this will run Excel to your accountant's point. Exactly. And then it will, it will run all the you know desktop apps. And basically right. what they want is, I guess, people to have both. So when they don't need the keyboard, they'll have a great tablet. And right. they, Anyway, it could work for Microsoft today. Well, <laughs> and, 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 and investors know. liked it too. So if you saw, if you watched Mike. They, they Hold on, Clayton. Go ahead, say, say again, Clayton. Uh, I was just saying, investors liked it too. If you looked at Microsoft earlier in the week, I think it was like a twenty-five dollars a share. By the end of the week, it's up. Uh, I think it ended the week over twenty-seven dollars. So, oh, wow. uh, so yeah, investors are seeing something exciting from Microsoft for the first time in a while. And uh, and you know that wasn't the case a few weeks ago. We were seeing Microsoft shares keep dipping and dipping and dipping. So. You know, somebody's liking it, and some analysts are seeing this. I'm just curious who's going to buy it. And I'm curious how you can get a forecast like that, again, when it's going to take a year, right? Is it about a year to market for this in, in tablet they form? They haven't made any uh, dates, but I would guess this will be summer 2012 that this comes out. They're going to have a, fi a public preview, public beta <clears throat> later this year. I think that we're, we're talking June. September, maybe. You even, think September? Yeah, yeah mm. certainly before September. I don't know. September is when you need to, I would say... June or July, because you want to get in the back-to-school market and the holiday buying market. I think that was a problem they had with both Windows 7 and Windows Vista. Is they missed the ship date. Remember, it came out in January or February, which is but about you, the worst you, time. You, you touched the big issue is that if you cut for the phone, you doesn't That's run on the so tablet. Good. If you cut cut for the tablet, doesn't run on the phone yeah. yet. They say um, nothing official, but that's a pain because you need two apps. So well, they're saying they won't do many changes on this. You think this will still look new in a year? 
Well, that's a good question, too, because yeah. as you said, Loic, it's a very fast-moving market. Uh, Apple's not going to sit still. Apple will have uh, another iPad before then. Uh, I don't know. This is a... You know, I, I can, I'm, I'm going to have to say I'm, I'm going to moderate my thoughts. At first, I was very negative about this because I was really concerned about the attempt to take one metaphor across all these platforms. So you've convinced me otherwise, Loic. Um, Good Microsoft, you can give me more money. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk after the show. I will, I will give the benefit of the doubt. And the thing that I've always said, and, I, and, I, and I, you do have to commend them for, is at least trying. At least, instead of saying, well, I'm just going to do more of the same, Let's do something really, really. Well, it's a question really of, of life or death, I think. You think Look, so? They had well, to do Windows this. Phone 7 and Nokia, right? Nokia is going to die if it doesn't work, right? Clearly. And I think Microsoft cannot screw up the phone, and it's the same with a tablet. So I, I don't think they're trying. I think they just have to, right? Right. Yeah, if, if their business is software and they're not mobile and they're not in the mobile space, it's being dominated by the iPad. You're right, it's sink or swim. And there's only so long you can survive, and I'm thinking that enterprise space, certainly seeing it with BlackBerry, <laughs> certainly seeing it with RIM this week with the terrible news from RIM. What was the terrible news for RIM? Are they out of that the they're going to get rid of the playbook, or are they going to fire sale? Playbook, playbook was a huge fail. Yeah. And I think is that, that what you're talking about? Yeah, to, I mean, you know, from in one quarter going from a million devices sold down to 200,000 yeah. devices within the same quarter. I mean, the CEOs are off the rocker. I don't know what they're thinking. And the other thing I think is they burned half of their cash in a few quarters. Like, their cash is going away, like, really fast. That's why So you saying. guys you guys will agree with uh, Matt Honan writing for Gizmodo who said, if you already hate Windows 8, then you hate technology. I like that line. <laughs> I like yeah. Matt Honan. He's That's great. great. Of course. Yeah. You can't just look at something and dismiss it automatically. I mean, look at Apple again. Oh, I can. <laughs> <laughs> but on the other hand, you know, Dvorak taught me this. Because I would say, John, you hated this three seconds ago. Now you love it. He said, Leo, foolish consistency is the hobgoblin of small minds. <laughs> so that's right. he, he also, didn't he used to... Uh, review software with just looking at the box? Nah, I, uh, poor John. I was the guy who said that. <laughs> That's so a good John, one. That's John never de de denied it, but, but it's true. It's true. Just look at the box. And, you know, he's kind of right. Sometimes you can tell just by He must be very box. sad when there is no box anymore. Yeah, there's no box anymore. <laughs> Uh, I want to talk about what's going on with Facebook. Uh, F8 is coming up. I think, Alexia, you, you're already starting to kind of feel the drumbeat. Uh, Facebook did add a huge feature ahead of F8, uh, the subscribe button. And uh, it strikes me, and again, maybe you guys can talk me out of it, that Facebook is really starting to lose its way here. But, but let's take a break, and we'll talk about that in just a moment. A great panel with us from Fox & Friends, Clayton Morris. So nice to see you in the uh, sauna today. <laughs> God, it's get undressed. <laughs> He's really, really. <laughs> During this break, would you mind I'm just taking off? Pants. Just take off your shirt. That's take all. off something. Take time. off your shirt. Every Clay. five minutes. You e take a little bit more every time. <laughs> Alexia Sotsis is here from TechCrunch.com. Loic Lemur from Low Web. We're going to be at Low Web. I'm really excited. Low Web is December seventh, eighth, ninth. Yes, seven, eight, nine. In Paris. In Paris, three thousand people. That was tough for me to say with the Bordeaux wine today. And sixty countries <laughs> coming. It is such all a in great. English. It's you don't a need to learn French. That's what's amazing. It's, it's so. My sense of it was, um, it's a conference for entrepreneurs and startups in France, but you bring a lot of Americans and, and other European uh, entrepreneurs together to talk about it's it. It's only a third French, so it's actually a world, world event, 60 countries coming. It's going to be so much fun. Uh, we're going to have a booth there. And you don't know, you don't have a booth. You have, you have your own studio. We're going to have a studio. It's not as big as this studio, but we're, we're building you a studio in the center. Wow. And you're going to, to just do tweet and inter interview, you know, whomever you want. It's going to be really, really cool. Tweet, tweet goes tweet. to Paris. Tweet goes to Paris. Yes. I can't wait. So Sarah Lane and I will be there uh, broadcasting uh, the 7th, 8th, and 9th from Le Web. And what's cool is you bring in so many interesting people. We'll get a chance to talk to all I'll of I'll be there. And Alexia will be there also. That's yeah, great. Clayton and, and David, there. you can you can. I would love it. Yeah. You want but, to go? Uh, yeah, we'll have uh, what we try to bring is all, you know, all the cool. So the, the theme is social local mobile. So yeah. we're bringing, uh, you know, Flipboard. Mike McHugh is coming. Love we're we're uh, bringing Instagram. It. We're bringing uh, 955. You heard this app that just launched this week, which is amazing. Band of the day. Is that the name, Alexia? You That's read TechCrunch, right? <laughs> yes. Band of the day. <laughs> it's They're amazing. I don't know what that is. Company. Oh, oh. It's, you want to know what that is? Well, uh, yeah. Okay. Well, next yeah. time. <laughs> oh, I'm come excited. Come to the web. Come to the web. I'll come to the web. <laughs> Should be a lot of fun. Will Mike be there? 
Uh, Mike will be there and he will even do more. He asked me, you know, let's do more because right. he's no tech crunch, so he's completely uh, free. So yes, he will be very, he will have a classic Marisa Mayer, Mike Harrington. It, every year we do that's this. That's an amazing interview when he does that, <laughs> I'll tell you. And, uh, I don't know how you get Marissa each year to agree to that. It, yes. she, she got engaged in Paris. I know, she loves so, it. Uh, in fact, you can't move the day of Le Web because... She got engaged. We don't move uh, the web because she got engaged at the web. So it's part of a celebration. And, and every year, Loic asks people to get engaged. Like he starts from now. Like, yeah, get, get engaged. Get yeah, get engaged. <laughs> they are the speakers. See, and every year there is someone getting engaged uh, at the web. Absolutely. Wow. So, well, Paris yeah. is very romantic, even in December, which is not the best time of year to go to Paris. I got to tell you. Oh, cool, Jeff. Clark it was here. freezing cold. I have to say, it snowed. It snowed, yeah. We 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 didn't expect that it happens. Uh, oh, I know this guy. It happens every. Uh, <laughs> Why did you use the picture where my my left arm is missing? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We'll fix that. That's the strange. I never understood that picture. It's yeah, Phil Libin of Evernote. So you oh, know, Phil is great. Social, I love Phil. You know, mobile apps. Uh, I see. Uh, uh, Jeremiah o o Yang is there. Robert Scoble. Look like at Gabe's picture. Yeah. Gabe Rivera of Tech Meme. Uh, we have, uh, what is he wearing, a BP shirt? And he's holding a bottle of Worcestershire sauce. <laughs> <laughs> and Gabe just asked if, great episodes so far, can we just mention uh, Tech Meme 12 more times? That, yes, absolutely. <laughs> tech Meme Tech. I, I don't know why more people don't read Tech Meme, actually. It's, it's, like it's my the, homepage. Yeah, me too. I, it's the first thing I go to in the morning yeah. to see. I guess because it's kind of inside, you know, it's a, oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Go back to that. What are you wearing? A crown? Yes. That's my that's my original yes crown because I'm a princess of tech. I that's love my original that. Twitter picture. That's hysterical. And it's also the logo of the fake Alexia Totsis on Twitter. Can we uh -oh. have you on stage like this this year? With a crown, I will wear a crown. For and you. I will wore, be engaged. Week wore an Angry Birds outfit yeah, last year. That was hysterical. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we had the, one of the founders of Angry Birds. Anyway, yeah. we're looking anyway. forward. But you're to getting engaged this year, right? I will never get engaged. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I will be single and barren for the rest of my life. That's oh what my god! Oh my god! We get some more seat planes. <laughs> and uh, David Prager also with us from Revision Three. What's the latest at Revision Three? Oh, we're having a good time. We've uh, been launching a few shows. We got another one launching uh, August 29th. Did uh, you make a pivot? Did you kind of go from being a um, creator of programming to a aggregator of programming? I think we do both. I think we knew that uh, as the environment around a lot of, you know, uh, authentic individuals creating, you know, content started to proliferate more. There's so many uh, people like Hack5 and... Exactly. Uh, you've got that f that crazy Montreal food... Yeah, uh, Epic Meal Time. Epic Meal Time. Lightning in a bottle in a big, big, big holy way. Holy cow. Um, but then, you know, the next one we're launching was with a, with a guy named Ty Moss. He, he's been running a show on YouTube called Ty's iPhone Help, and he's got about 170 or so thousand subscribers. Wow. Uh, and so he's rebranding a tiny bit. He's going to change it, the name to, Ty, he, to Ty's iHelp, so it's not just iPhone, and we're launching that uh, on the 29th of this month. Awesome. Pretty excited about it. So, yeah, we do a we have a kind of a programming developing, development team which kind of looks at creating our own stuff, works at partnering with others that don't have content but have an audience, and then, you know, going out and finding people who do have an audience that we might be able to, you know, add some synergy to. That seems to be the thing. You, YouTube's doing that as well. YouTube's, yeah, yeah YouTube, it, YouTube is all into building yeah. channels. And that's why they bought Next, uh, uh, Next New Networks, basically. Yeah, and I mean, it's kind of like curating content, I, right. I, I guess, yeah. Right, right. And Alexia, we've already received three marriage proposals on yeah. the chat room, so... I do, to all three of you. Oh, I think Whoa, you she just got engaged on Twitter. No, wow. Like, there, talk my, about a turnaround. <laughs> um, we're going to, when we come back, would you shut down the tablet, Louis? Because when we come back, we're going to show you how fast yeah, that question, Windows too. 8 boots. Mm -hmm. do you so have, uh, we'll do that, that when we come you back. You have that Dominatrix again uh, book uh, you're going to read <laughs> as an advertising? I might. You never know. You, you never know. Yourself. I remember that. That's right. No, I want to talk about Squarespace, actually, the secret behind exceptional websites. We have a Squarespace site. Uh, inside.twip.tv. That's fantastic. Clayton just told you about his. Squarespace is a really great company for hosting and software. So you get the hosting, best hosting in the world. They're using, uh, I, you know, it's a very sophisticated Java-based virtual server technology that means there's always bandwidth no matter what you're doing. We've never brought a Squarespace site down ever. But it also is great content management software on top of that hosting. And the reason you want to do that is because it's always up to date. You're always running the latest version of the software. You don't have to worry about security. Trust me, 
this is the week where I wish I were on Squarespace. Um, we got hacked. Our Drupal got hacked this week. Um, you don't have to worry about that. Now, if you've got an existing blog, give it a try. Just go to, or if you want to do your first website, or maybe you've got a new idea for a website. This is one of the things Squarespace is great for. Got an idea? No problem. Go to squarespace.com. Click the Try It Free button right there. All you need is the name of a site, uh, a password, and an email, and you, for 15 days, have full access to the Squarespace tools. So you, you can really design a site from scratch at no cost to you, and if you decide you want to keep going, it's very affordable. Prices as low as a little bit more than $10 a month. Importing and exporting to all the major APIs, movable type, WordPress, TypePad, and Blogger, photo galleries, uh, point-and-click design, They've got widgets for all the social uh, tools, you know, Twitter and Facebook and LinkedIn and YouTube and everything. I mean, it just really couldn't be easier to use. Here's the deal. After you've tried it for free, if you decide you want to keep that site going, the pricing very affordable. And if you add the offer code TWIT9, T-W-I-T-9 at logout, you get an additional 10% off for the first six years, six, I'm sorry, six months. <laughs> I didn't mean to extend it that long. For six, six years. For six, you know, <laughs> six months, that's plenty. Uh, so if you can subscribe monthly, yearly, or uh, two years, and you see they have different plans. But just check it out for free right now, squarespace.com. Click that green Try It Free button. It's the secret behind exceptional websites. And it actually, just go to the examples page if you want to see. There it is. <laughs> uh, that's our inside twit blog that's a video I made with a new app on um, that's from the harmonics people on the iPad have you seen vid rhythm yet uh, Clayton it's so cool no I haven't should I just play a little bit of this video it's all about yeah. um, so the idea is Huh. You you record mm. on the iPad. You record little. You got audio in there? No, it's not coming out. All right, I can play it over here. All right. <laughs> um, you record a little bit, like it says. Okay, record boom or chick or a word, and then it assembles um, a it's like, video. It's like auto tune, but for sound effects. Yeah, it's 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 hard to describe, but it's so cool. I don't, do you have audio on my? Uh, yep, on I my do. Thing? All right, uh. let's let's. This is. Uh, this is, by the way, not Squarespace being slow coming up. This is YouTube being slow coming up. Hello, YouTube. See, Squarespace is faster than YouTube. Yeah. All right, sc screw it. We'll do it. We'll do it another time. Squarespace. I don't run it, but they should have. Oh, I don't even really see a picture yet. That's the audio. There it is. It's really, it took about 30 seconds just to record those little things, and then it assembles it. Silliest program ever, Vid Rhythm. Okay, that's more than enough. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Squarespace.com. <laughs> <laughs> Has nothing to do with that video. All right, so you shut this down. I think I did. It's dead, dead, dead. Okay. And then... And, and, uh, you got, a, you got a shot here? Wait a minute. You, did, we got to have the shot because it takes so little time. Yeah, go ahead. Ready? ready? The, yep. Okay, in three, two, one. There it goes. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003. There's the Samsung. 1,004, 1,005, mm -hmm. 1,006, 1,007. I'm slowing down. 1,008. It was faster than this last time I did this. 1,009, 1,010. Oh. Yeah, there we go. It's done. There you go. That's it. I think the MacBook Air takes 11 seconds or like 10 and a half seconds. Solid so state drives are great. I have to say. I think, the, uh, I think the iPad takes like 40 seconds. The iPad's boot. much slower. Yeah. yeah. Well, of course, who shuts down any of this? Yeah, stuff? no one shuts it down the iPad, right. Right? right? Yeah, until you get a lot of apps crashing, you realize Yeah, that. lately I've had actually a lot of, uh, a lot of force close on the, uh, on the iPad. Uh, Facebook, let's talk a little bit about it. They added uh, this week, they added a subscribe button, which is kind of confusing. So now on Facebook, you have your personal page, which has a limit of 5,000 friends. It's synchronous, so you can't, somebody can't be your friend unless they ask and you say yes. There's also fan pages where it's asynchronous. Anybody can be your follower, and there's no limit. So I have Facebook.com slash the Leo Laporte, which is all I could get, as a fan page, right? So this is this is kind of the official page, and anybody can like that page. And then I have Facebook.com slash Leo G Laporte. That's my personal page. Well, now they've added a subscribe feature, which you can turn on. In fact, if I go to my Facebook page, you'll see it even starts to rec re recommend people I should subscribe to in the uh, right-hand column here. 
All right, uh, so they don't have to become friends. They just get They to follow me. It. Yeah, and it shows up in... Right, exactly. To, it shows up in the it's exactly like Twitter, right? It's here. Twitter. Yeah. But, but it, if you're a public figure, you can have a public figure account in your personal account. And what they're trying to do is roll it out, create the ability for people who have public figure accounts to merge them with their private accounts and right. make it so, and they can take all those people that are subscribed to their public figure accounts and make it so that they can just manage that within their main account. And those people that are fans of their public figure profile follow only the. <laughs> Thank you for explaining that, David. That was, it's crystal that was clear. clear. That was super clear. And I understand confused, now. Buddy. It's not but, that confusing, Leo. But Zook, it's totally confusing. You, let, you get this? You let Facebook. <laughs> You name I hate Facebook. Okay. You, you right. Okay, so you have subs you have subscribers okay. on your page. Yes, I do. And so whatever you've set to public, these people are following. Right. And are so when I post on when I post on my Facebook personal page, I can make it public and then these people No, you get rid of your Facebook page. You get that's, rid that's of your fan page you get as rid a public figure. You, you well, no, 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 wait, 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 wait a minute. How do I get rid of my so, so no, 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 fan what, page? Is there what, an automatic way what, to do that? Here's what God is saying. Zuckerberg, yeah. <laughs> right? So here's my fan page. What, what, he, what do I do? What do do? He killed his page and he moved all his fans into subscribers. So I'm going to tell these 4,125 people what? No, no, they, no you, you tell Facebook. You tell about. them nothing. You just disappear. No, you ask Facebook. They don't you find know. a friend there. Use uh, Facebook as Leo Laporte. No, 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 no. What happens that then? That switches. Yeah. No. Two accounts. That's uh, something else. Uh, use Facebook as Leo. <laughs> you know, I got to tell you something. <laughs> Take the tour. This is so freaking confusing. And I have to say, I think Facebook is making a huge mistake. Now, we'll see what they're doing, and I want to know what they're going to do at F8. You probably know already, Alexia. But it strikes me that Facebook, in an attempt to keep up see, with Twitter and Google... See, 5 million people. <laughs> yeah, no, so good. So he dumped 5 million people? No. If I how is that a good policy? They moved them as, as, follow, as subscribers. Subscribers. So how do you Followers? do it? But wait a minute. Coca-Cola and other brands have spent millions of dollars no, 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 getting people to push the like button. No, 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 no. It's for individuals. It's for, who for you. So for they Alex. want brands to use pages? Mm -hmm. And individuals yes. to use so, whatever so they call move However, your fans to your subscriber followers. But what about Lady Gaga? Is that a brand or is that a person? That's a good. No, that's it's a good question. She's a person. But, but but you can't. You lose analytics. So if you go ahead and you move that over, you precisely. Lose all oh, that's a good point. You know, it's one thing to. You, no, yeah, look you at this. When I look page. at my when I look at my uh, click here, I see how many impressions. I right. see the percent of uh, feedback on here on every. You lose all of that. All so of that you, goes away. That? All of oh, that goes yes. away if you move it over with the subscribe. So therefore, I don't know. I mean, unless they move and they're able to migrate the analytics over to the subscribe functionality for fan pages, then it's not. It's worthless. It's worthless to me. I mean, I think like a, a couple of years ago, I hit on my personal page and just stupidly accepted. You know, just said add friend, whatever, and just kept you know accepting folks who had asked. And then I hit my limit on my my personal page, and it's impossible now to clean it up. You know, I just as soon delete the thing. But first, but Leo, anyway, well, that's what I ended up doing. I, I, I think I you won't get over. any result on Facebook because you're just cross-posting from Twitter and that they know that, so they won't help you. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just say this is what Facebook should do? Submit it, and you guys tell me I'm wrong. Submit it. Here's what Facebook should do. They should stop all this crap. They should make a... Why do people want... Why? Who uses Facebook? Ignorant people don't know anything about the internet. This is how they keep track of their friends and family. Normal people, not ignorant, but just people who are not interested. Normal people, they want privacy. They want to know what mom did. They want to know what their college roommate did. They don't want all this complicated stuff. It's way too confusing. Facebook should stop adding think, all these well, crazy features and just focus on what brought them to the table, I think part of which what is doing, making this getting is also people a laid. reaction to Google Plus and circles. Because <laughs> yeah. it, it is because if you look at people, if you're accepting friends now, you see that, and it is confu not confusing. I understand that they feel pressure from Twitter and Google Plus. Friends, college friends, they're college making a huge friends, mistake. Family, they want huge you to be mistake. able to. Categorize That's another thing that. they've done. They've made lists. So now, when I post on Facebook, and I think they the, want you to be open. They want people to be open. People are afraid to be open, so they say, "Oh, well, we'll be able to let you privatize different things in different ways, so that you can say more about it." And also, you know, Twitter is you know inherently open. Look so at this. There's a problem with Facebook started as private and Twitter started as open. Does this remind you of? Google Plus. Now, when I post, I can say, "Post to people who went to my high school, people who live in my area, people who work at Twit, people who are, went to my college." I can. They, they've made. They've made 
all of these lists into who I post. This is totally Google Plus. Facebook, this yeah. doesn't make people feel better. This confuses people. <laughs> it is a mess. It is an absolute it's a, mess. It's a I've got, mess. I have Any a couple of, of uh, fan pages for different for our different shows, you know, like Daddy on Board, these other shows, and I can't, I mean, it's just a mess trying to manage all of them, where this goes. Use Facebook as a page makes no sense. Sometimes when I'm using the mobile version of this, I'm, I'm, I'm not that person. I'm the other page, and I'm posting as this other page, it makes no sense. And why are you still using it? Because you because have to. Because you have to, exactly. So, exactly. No, it's, first of all, it's have you guys like ever read businesses. the John Battelle uh, article, Search is a Pencil? And he was arguing no. that Facebook's like Photoshop and Twitter is like a pencil. And you use, tw like, you use Twitter just, to, it's simple, and you use Twitter just to post a status update. But if you need to use Photoshop, you need to use so Twitter. That's so Silicon yes. Valley ish, I'm sorry. There are 500 well, million people use using Plus. Facebook, and they don't know about Twitter. Seven hundred million. I, I, I admit, 700, and somebody in the chat room said you're not using it like normal people. No, no, I agree. But that's what I'm saying is normal. If normal people don't want all this stuff, this all of these things that they're putting on Facebook are ways for them to try to make money. They're throwing stuff up against the wall. They don't understand. They have no vision in this. And there's no when, central core when principle. Posting something and they're screwing the hell out of it. In a year, this is going to be gone. They've totally got vision. They made three billion dollars in 2011. What 700 million or 700 million of that was? But that's profit, history. Profit. That's history. Right. But the, but then One you know that was certainly profit. you know they were out. Well, maybe not out in front. Obviously, MySpace was was out in front. But but I think. To, to Leo's point, I look at somebody like my mom, right, who who loves Facebook. She's able to connect That's with Facebook's my audience. Make right, mom but, happy. Well, not but, only. But they're, they're not like because, you know, there are certain functionalities that are else. public. And so when you add, like, public and then subscribe, most of the defaults are already there. So no one would need to subscribe because they're already getting everything if they just go to her feed anyway. So you now if she sets certain things to private, then that's where subscribe would be valuable because then I su could subscribe and not get all the private stuff. But she doesn't know that. I mean, it's, it really is. You need to read, like, three books to know all the functionality of Facebook. It is, it is in that respect very much like Photoshop. But, Leo, but they're aiming, it's for the Photoshop for mom. It doesn't Leo, make any Leo, sense. Leo, 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 see my 14 year old here, he knows <laughs> nothing else than Facebook and yeah. he laughs at what we're saying. Because he doesn't use anything else. When you talk to him about Twitter, he doesn't know no, why you would Facebook. use Twitter. Right. You know, and so it's it's not for moms, that for sure. Did you see how they com <laughs> they combined email in my mind? They combined email with IM. There was another crazy thing. Because oh, that's what it's Messenger. totally like. It's, it's basically that. like a combination of email and IM conversations. When Messenger came out, when you do, do a you Facebook email, it basically pops Every up day. on your screen immediately. Mm. Really. I, well, but I, now, like I used to use Facebook occasionally with people as email. As soon as Messenger came out, I mean, it's right in front of your face in half a second. The only good thing about that, in a way, is that you deal with it and it's done, so you're consistently at inbox zero. I and think it's this also is, free. This I mean, is, Messenger's replaced texting for me this for is, the most part. This is overcomplicated. This is what they did with Beluga, right? Um, so who's 14? Is that your son? Yes. And you use this all the time. Do you feel like you understand Facebook exactly how it works? It all makes perfect sense to you? Come over here. Come over here. We got to come, come here. Are you come real? here. Take my seat. We get. Let's get a. Let's get a. A, a real no, Facebook user. Forget his mind, but. Sit here. <laughs> yeah. Explain why you don't know anything else. T tell me. Tell me why Facebook is Aww. is the thing. What's your What's your name? Uh, Gautier. Gautier, nice to meet you. Um, lean right into that microphone. So tell me, you don't have to leave Loic. Oh, I'll be here. You want the younger generation to take <laughs> He's over? Filling his wine glass. So, can you get me some root beer? So Gautier. <laughs> Yeah, get some more root beer for root Alexis. Beer, maybe some water. Some Make yourself chips, useful. Other chips. <laughs> <laughs> so, Gautier, you use Facebook all the time. You're every day. You spend hours on it. Yeah. Yeah. W what do you like about it? Um, I well, usually the chat. And uh, it's your friends that are on there, right? Yeah, mostly. Do you do you follow a lot of brand pages on there? Um, well, like, I'm not really interested in following people. But, uh, yeah. So you don't subscribe. You don't. You don't like pages. Uh, if I go to your Facebook account, you won't see. Uh, you know, Gautier likes Nike shoes and likes Coca Cola and all. Well, that. I, I have some uh, some pages I like, but um, I just did that. Like, uh, usually it's my friends who like those pages, and right. then I just see that and like him too. So. You don't you don't interact with the brands or anything no. like that. No. And he doesn't email anything. Do you don't use email? You use Facebook Messenger now? Uh, no. Yeah, it's mostly Facebook message, and otherwise, sometimes email, but. So you use Facebook because that's where your friends hang out. Yeah. It's the best way to stay in touch with your friends, see what they're doing, share pictures with them. Yeah. And you find it very easy to use. Do you see a lot of features there that you don't use? 
Uh, the, um, well, the only feature I use is uh, the friend part of it. So, otherwise, right. Yeah. But do, so, do you, kind of what I'm saying. Categories, though. Like, do you have friends, family? Do you do lists? Different, like really good friends versus not so good friends. Do you do that? Um, not really. I only add my actual friends and. To be honest, I don't have any member of my family in yeah. my. Friends. Do you do you keep your privacy settings pretty stringent? I, I know kids aren't Leo, allowed to be public, so they don't. Ha they're not a part of the subscribe feature because they're not allowed to have public. You can't allow subscribe, yes. but 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 in your account set, do you look at the privacy settings and look at those uh, account uh, at those settings and and mess with them? Do you? Mm. Yeah, I put everything in private. You just make it private. Mm -hmm. You hear so, that common refrain among kids. Do well, you use Google Plus or any of your friends on Google Plus at all? They're no. not allowed to. Twitter. It's, uh, yeah, age you have to be 18. Again. But, 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 but oh, yeah. so this is kind of my position is that Gautier is, the, is exactly who Facebook should be serving. If, it, 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 unfortunately, Facebook's trying to make a, a killing in the market, but I think by doing so, they're going to make themselves less appealing to Gautier and his friends because really you use it in a very simple and I think very effective way. It's how you message people, it's how you look at their pictures, see what they're up to, you do stuff on the wall. Now one of the things you're going to add uh, this week is music. Would you, if you had Rhapsody or some music service in there, would you kind of have that going in the background? Um, well, uh, what do you mean? Like using Facebook as do you, a... Do you happen to use RDO or Spotify or any of those? Or turntable. How do you listen to music, Gautier? Yeah. Um, iTunes only. Yeah. Just iTunes playing in the background. You don't use Ping? Do you know what Ping is? Yeah. Do you use it? Uh, not no, really. No, of course not. I uh, just have my <laughs> library. Um, do you use Skype on Facebook? Do you ever video chat with people on Facebook? Um, not on Facebook, but uh, I use a lot of Skype just as an application. You know that Skype is built into Facebook. Yeah, yeah, I know. They just... Uh, but you don't use it? No. no. See, I, I, I think he's just underscoring my point, which is that there's a, there's a core set of features they should focus on, make, make easier to use, serve this audience better, and not start adding all this... Cr look at this crust. I got a question for you. Are you going to... Would you listen to music through Facebook? Like if you, if instead of iTunes, if there were a radio station and it would say, hey, Gautier, your friends are listening right now. They're listening to uh, LMFAO. Would you then like kind of <laughs> listen to it? I'm so <laughs> hip. I'm so with it. You are. Um, I, it depends if I don't know the music. I'll, otherwise, uh, if I have it on my uh, library, iTunes library, I would You probably just keep iTunes running all the yeah. time, right? There's always music going. It's just iTunes. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm thinking of turntable right now because turntable is for listening, creating playlists with your friends. But do you know what turntable FM is? No. No. <laughs> See, I think we live in a completely different yeah, space from space. normal users, and I think that Gautier is a normal user. Yeah. And I, I, I mean, okay, thank you, Gautier. I appreciate yeah. your, your, your your being a you guinea a pig for job. us. Yeah. Very good job. job. Louis, where's my root beer? <laughs> uh, we'll get your root beer. So, can somebody get uh, oh, guess no, Ms. Tosis some? No, no, you stay. You, you're, you're a panelist. We have people. John or somebody, would you get yeah, that root beer right for? Oh, whoa, whoa. There you go. That was fast. That was I'm going to ask my sauna boy for another beer. beer. Sauna boy. Towel. Oh, sauna boy. Sauna yeah, no boy. mail, no Twitter, no Google. So do you, have, do you see what I'm saying is that I think Thanks, Gauthier guys. doesn't need all this fancy, elaborate no, stuff. Yeah. And I think it just, now it maybe isn't getting in his way, but I don't think it, it serves Facebook to be adding all these mm. features. No, I get, I get what you're saying, totally. I, I think, think Tell me I'm thing. wrong, Alexa. It's an age thing. I mean, Gautier doesn't have, he doesn't hate Facebook because it's a utility. For me, I don't love Facebook, but I don't find it that offensive. I wish it would do something with events. Like, it's got so much. It has events. It has events, but it doesn't. I've been invited to Al Scardino's yard sale. <clears throat> they're, they're pretty disorganized. It's going on right now. The mobile UI is kind of terrible. It doesn't let you click oh. into the addresses. I mean, there's such a huge market. Oh, come on. Market. The UI is terrible all I, around. I, I think, no, it's awful. I'm, I'm with Patel on the, on the Photoshop I think that Facebook needs to do what Leo says, is make sure that the capabilities and the functionalities that people like remain the same and people can use that. But at the same time, they need to look at what other people in their space that our competitors are doing and make sure that they innovate, react to them, and it, maybe iterate what they're doing better and come up with new and fun new ideas because otherwise... Well, that's clearly, what they're, beat them. that's clearly what they're doing. I mean, this, this subscribe is a direct response to Twitter and Google+. Plus. What else, Alexis, Alexis, do you know what else they're going to be doing uh, at uh, F8? Music, right? Alexia. Alexia, sorry. Music. Uh, there might I keep be thinking something. of Ariana Stasimopoulos and I want to call you Ariana. <laughs> Someone call me a young Ariana. <laughs> Ariana, <laughs> darling. 
What what are they afraid? What are they going to be? What is Facebook going to be doing? Other than music, I'm not, I'm not really sure on specific. I mean, I, I think they're going to announce a lot of stuff, Project right? Blue. They've had their iPad app around for a while. That's right. And they might announce that. Uh, you, that's right. You, there's a switch on Facebook mm -hmm. that says if you're coming in from TechCrunch, you can't see what they're doing, isn't there? There's an. You know I tend to think that they don't update fast enough on my on my Facebook. It's you. I, I also, that might be a little that's paranoia. Like, I also think that, that Facebook's going to be making it so in, able, in, in the ability to have different kinds of feeds, you'll be able to have more immediate feeds. So things that people are doing at the moment. So, so when the music comes out, you'll be able to have a feed of what's really happening right now and then have a feed of, I'm just going to catch up on what's been going on with my friends. I think they're going to focus on that, I think. I think Facebook is in, is in peril. And uh, I think the risk to them right now is getting so complicated and convoluted that they can make it very difficult for the core users like Gautier and my mom. You're sounding like Scoble. Are you like a big Google Plus fan? I am. <laughs> <laughs> well, but why does that Google make me sound like, like Scoble? It's like the friend feed. It's the friend feed of 2011. Oh. Yes, damn. I love oh. friend feed. I love friend feed. I'm sorry, the friend. But so you're saying that you, Facebook is is the be all and end all for you, Alexa? No, that's. Did I say it's that? It's what you love. I think tw I love Twitter, but uh, but I love Twitter because it, it's the use case. That I that I'm most connected with, I get right. to go on there and see news. Right. You know, and Me too. Yeah. That's you're absolutely right. Well, weren't all the big winners at, at TechCrunch um, based on different ways to do social interactions, and a lot of them as plugins to existing social networks like Facebook? Well, the Shaker was uh, a pl Shaker was like a. Well, somebody said a have a hotel for Facebook. Yeah, but yeah. I was really surprised Shaker uh, one disrupt, to be honest with you. I yeah. thought, Same what year. the hell? Yeah. We were doing Avatar Chat in 1998 on Tech TV. It's Second Life. Yeah. Yeah, it is Second Except Life. It's first it, it, life. The That's Sims. They, I'm not going to defend so, Shaker, but, but So the reason people think this is a hot startup is because, one word, Facebook. It's designed for Facebook. Mm. Yeah, so it's that makes color. It, it makes it hot because it will be a plug-in for Facebook. So that I'll have avatar chat in Facebook, but it Why seems to me that there is a there's Zynga. a like Zynga. Wait, 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 wait. Zynga doesn't let you live a virtual life. I mean, it's yes, poker. It, does. I mean, and it lets you live. A, Are make you kidding? A have you ever played farm? Farmville? What? <laughs> Two minutes. <laughs> that's, a, that's a virtual <laughs> life, isn't it? Yeah, no, How are I'm, your I'm, pigs doing? Are they okay? <laughs> When's the last time you harvested? It's. I, I, I think uh, people don't want to party as a virtual avatar by a virtual bar, and that just seems no, totally no. wrong. No. You, know, you should have asked me I mean, 10 years ago, I said, people don't want to make raise virtual turnips and, like, you know, <laughs> virtual pigs. But pe people do. People, but, it, but, it appeals to people to make these weird pixelated lives. I, I don't get it at all, but I actually don't have free time. So Imagine that's one a thing. So that's one thing to, you know, jump on Farmville and, and, and you know, grow radishes or whatever. But we saw the failure of color, uh, the app, you know, which was supposed to be social context, right? Those people around you who you could share photos with, you could have instant conversations. Does, to, to my mind, this is really like color inside of Facebook. You could virtually meet, sure, I mean, it's Second Life in that way, but it's still social with context, right? Have you used it? It's not color had a terrible UI. The problem with color was no one understood how to get around in it or what or what was happening. Well, like what's they, the 69 when, icon? When for? they launched, they didn't have user base of people near them. I think they wanted to launch it South by Southwest. They didn't get it yeah, out I in think time. You're right. yeah, and I no agree. one was able to use it with other people using it anywhere near them. Imagine yeah, how the true. story of color would have been different if it had launched at South they by Southwest. Have... I don't no. think the story would have been different. I think that was a, a, a horrible startup. Wasn't there uh, one of the investors at uh, Sequoia just, uh, I heard about Doug some Leone. article saying, like, I'm in full support. I can't wait. This is really exciting. <laughs> you can't wait for the, he can't wait for the For pivot. what? Stay tuned for the pivot. The pivot. Hmm. <laughs> Forty million dollars. I mean, I can that's pivot. something that 41. they're working on. Forty-one. Blue. <laughs> no, they're working on a project called Blue, and that's something that might get announced. So maybe they could do every color in their rainbow: red, green, blue, <laughs> yellow, indigo. <laughs> Let's move on, shall we? Sound, by the way, SoundCloud, Deezer, and Rhapsody, according to this Mom. blog called TechCrunch, are the three What's music. I never heard of them. Robert Waters writing. Uh, the three, uh, and of course, Robin is looking at the source code. I love it. No, Robin isn't that one source code guy. Is oh, this is that guy. that guy. That, love him. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that guy. Uh, wait, Yova. Wait. Yeah. Yo Evo, Yo Evo Shap. 
Evo Shep. Uh, so he looked at the, uh, the code and he found in the code Spotify, Radio, Mog, SoundCloud, Deezer, and Rhapsody all in here. I am, I am a big Spotify fan. I'm trying to think. if I think that there's potential there for Facebook data to be applied to Spotify to make it more interesting. So it already I, is, kind of. Is it? I mean, it's your social graph. That's right. Yeah, that's right. My social graph comes from say, Facebook. It's that's right. uh, the only European startup really truly global. Yeah. It's a big success from Europe for once. Is it the only one? What about Seismic? <laughs> Seismic is based in San Francisco. San Francisco has an ink after its name, but we have a team there. Uh, but no, there's Skype too that is all, all you know very often referred to. But Skype was sold and resold, and so right. yeah, very Skype too. But uh, Spotify That's is a huge why European success. Yeah. Why is that? There are no more Europe successful European startups than just those. Um, because generally, I mean, the main reason for me is generally the Europeans have, I'm going to make friends again, uh, but I'm trying to be <laughs> honest. Uh, I, I, I have done that mistake too. Is when you're in Paris, you focus on France. Right. When you're in Germany, you focus on Germany It's first, balkanized. Right? Yeah. So what happens is by the time you've been focusing on Germany, trying to own Germany or Spain, there is, you know, someone in Silicon Valley who raised more and has right. more success. So YouTube versus a French called Daily Motion and so on. That, to me, is the main reason. Is we so don't start in English. So the, re the reason the band Phoenix is a big success, they're from France, is because they sing in English. I'm serious. That's course, bizarre. But you have tons but no, of... No, it's, it's totally like true. The DJs are all owned by French. You know, yeah. David Guetta. But I'm just thinking that they're an amazing band and I kind of realized one day that the reason that they're so huge is that, you know, they've got a potential audience of every English speaker on the planet versus every French speaker mm -hmm. on the planet. I mean, it just makes sense. It, it's the language of, of pop culture English. Yeah. Have you seen MCM? It's all, MCM is the French MTV, and it's all uh, English. That's so or, weird. I mean, some French rap. So we're going to talk a little bit. Robert Scoble, you mentioned his name. Yes. He who shall, shall not be named. Plus. He, uh, yeah. <laughs> he says that uh, there is a flipboard killer coming from Google soon called Propeller. We'll talk about that and more. With our great panel, Clayton Morris from Fox and Friends, Alexia Tsotsis from uh, TechCrunch, Louis Lemur from Seismic and LoWeb.net. You got squatted on LoWeb.com. Yeah, it, actually, it's, Jerk. Not, it's inaccurate. The uh, domain was registered before we launched, I have to oh, say. Oh, okay. But <laughs> they don't do anything with it, which pisses me they off. They should give it to very, you. Yeah, to, yeah, give it they, to Loic. They put, like, stupid ads. Like, that really upsets me. I know. I hate it. I tried I to that. buy it, and they don't even answer. You know, it's just squatting. Yeah. Oh, Leo.com was a... Uh, oh! Oh, <laughs> What are yeah. you laughing at? <laughs> yeah. How about Leo Laporte? You have Leo Laporte, right? No. Somebody else has that. Leo really? Laporte on That's sad. I don't have... Even on Maybe Facebook, I don't like have Leo Facebook. Laporte. Uh, well, at least on Leo.com, I can learn different language sure. courses. <laughs> you know what? It really oh, irks me. See, see, it's the same. We get you know, it really irks Christian me. dating. Leo.com had for years been owned by the Royal Bank of Canada because their uh, mascot is a lion, is Leo the Lion. And so it was a RBC. Uh, it was a beautiful RBC page. So I just gave up. I said, well, obviously, they'll never give that up. And then about a year or two ago, they, they just stopped paying for it. Oh. I should have been watching it, and some clown got it. Yeah. I could have had that. Yeah, they probably make a thousand a month with that or something. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. It's worth, it's have worth. you contacted this guy? No, though? because, the, you know, you can't. How do you contact him? Because. Is he not it, on who is? We tried it bounces. Well, no, I, know, I understand that you could contact him, but as soon as you contact him, he goes, oh, I, got a, I, got a, I got a live one. So you have to contact him like, hi, my name is Leo Dickinson, and um, I, I, I would really like an a email, leo.com. Can I buy that for $10? But yeah. you know he's not going to give it to me for $10. How much is it worth to get leo.com? Oh, I would say 50K. Shut up. <laughs> How much did color by color.com for? 300K? Oh, it was more than 300K, that. Wasn't it? it was a lot of I know that, um, Sex.com was a, what's a million dollars. I know that for uh, .lk domains, which is like Sri Lanka, you have to appeal to the government. Or, so I've heard. And so when Kevin got milk, mi.lk, he, he just asked them for it and he got it at cost. Wow. So it's wow, if, you go to, cool. if you go to milk.com, though, the owner's like, you better, get, you better be offering me double digit millions, otherwise, right. don't, even, don't even bother. Right. A three, I think a three-letter domain name like Leo.com yeah. is going to be very difficult to get. But it's sad because this guy's not using it. What's he doing with it? Nothing. 
Um, let's take a break. When we come back, uh, also David Prager's here from Revision 3. I just wanted to introduce, reintroduce everybody. Uh, when we come back, uh, yes, let's talk about uh, the Flipboard clone, If see if anybody knows anything about that. But before I do that, I want to talk about audiobooks from audible.com. I am a big Audible fan. I don't think I'm telling you anything. If you've ever watched me on any of these shows, you know that I listen when I'm in the car, when I'm at the gym, when I'm cleaning house. Audiobooks are great. Uh, and I highly recommend it. And I'm going to give you a chance to try it for free right now. Get two books for free if you go to audible.com slash twit2. You'll be signing up for the Platinum account. That's two books a month. But the first month's free. First two books are free. And uh, they're yours to keep canceled at any time. Now, I think this is going to be one. You know, Jane Lynch is hosting the Emmys tonight. She's, of course, the star Sue Sylvester on Glee. I didn't know she had a memoir. Carol Burnett wrote the foreword and helps narrate it. Jane Lynch, Happy Accidents. So that's a good one. Now, if you're into showbiz memoirs, now this is a tough one. There's the Rob Lowe book, Stories I Only Tell My Friends. Man, that's probably pretty good. Rob Lowe narrates that one. Or Bossy Pants, Tina Fey's new memoir, which is supposed to be very good. And also narrated by Tina Fey. So these are great. These are, this, is, this is an example of Audible. You hear these people, these great stars talking in your head to you, reading to you. It's a wonderful way to get reading done when you just don't have time. If you're a little bit more literary, you want something a little bit more educational, how about this? Grand Pursuit. Sylvia Nasser wrote uh, uh, that fabulous um, uh, book about uh, uh, Beautiful Mind about the mathematician. This is his, her new book about economics called A Grand Pursuit, The Story of Economic Genius. Thomas Friedman's new book is out on audible.com. That used to be us, how America fell behind in the world it invented. I just think this is such a great resource for education, for entertainment, science and technology, sci-fi and fantasy. It's all here. So pick two books. Stephen Hawking's Brief History of Time. That would be kind of nice. Get smart while you're driving. Pick two books and uh, make Audible yours. Audible.com slash twit to a plays back on everything. In fact, if you've got the new Kindle, it's great because your Audible books show up along with your uh, Amazon books right there in the Kindle for you to download and listen to at any time. Audible.com slash twit2. Clayton, you're an Audible fan, I know. Oh, I love it. Yeah, we were just driving up here, two-hour drive, listening to uh, In Defense of Food by Michael Pollan. That's He's the follow-up to his uh, Omnivore's, uh, Omnivore's Dilemma book. Yeah. And, you know, I love the functionality on the, uh, the Audible app on the iPhone. Isn't that great? Because, yeah, you can pick, you know, which speed, the read Oops. rate. So if you want to, I actually listened to, I think, the in the Plex book about Google in triple speed. Do you really? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it depends on who's reading it, right? But I can get, you know, get through a good book in, in that amount of time. My wife can't stand it. She's like, will you just put it on the normal rate, please? See, I'm not in a hurry. I want to enjoy my books. You, you obviously want to get them over I feel over like with. there's so much knowledge. I just when, as Miles it. gets older, you're going to love Audible for kids' books, too, by the way. And, um... I read to my kid like crazy. I'm sure you will, too. Uh, in fact, you probably already yeah. are. Um, there's nothing more pleasant than, uh, than reading to your kid in bed. I just love it. But on the other hand, you know, when you're in the car and it can't be reading to the kid, it is a great way. We took car trips with the kids, and we'd always have audible books. Here's a great one, The Once and Future King by T.H. White, the story of King Arthur. If you've got a teenager in the car with you, 33 hours <laughs> I think yeah. it's great for... That's like Game of Thrones, 30 yeah. you will just keep running because you want to keep listening. One, oh, yeah, that's right. It'll keep you running. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Audible.com slash twit2. Two books are yours free if you go there right now. So does anybody know anything? First of all, Propeller is an interesting name for this Flipboard clone from Google because Propeller was the name... Jason Calacanis gave his dig oh, clone on it. AOL. I did. I said the word. <laughs> he who shall not be named gave his dig clone on AOL. Um, I don't. You know. I don't know if we know anything about this, but uh, propeller. Anybody working well, on I mean, it? Just what. I'm, just what. Just what. You know. We've been reading about it, which I. You know. I'm excited about. It. I think Google's finally starting to show some. They sure are. Some creativity in the design space online rather than having, you know, Google Reader looks like crap still. Uh, but, you know, now you see what they're able to do with Google Plus and you're starting to see this user interface. And it's and I'm excited. I'm, I'm excited by the idea of them creating something that's, hey, tied right into Google Reader for crying out loud. I mean, they've already got the pipeline there. Right. 
Um, so why you know, not? You know, I have to say, I always get nervous when I see Google's going to do a consumer progress mm. right. offer because their design sense is so pedestrian and kind of engineering focused. But you're seeing it shift, right? Aren't you? You're starting to see a lot of Google Plus, the look and design of Google Plus. You're starting to see that trickle into Google Docs. You're starting to see it all pop up all over the place. You're getting this clean, nice interface. So it'd be interesting to see what they're able to do with an iPad app uh, that's set to rival Flipboard. I mean, I'd be excited by it because I love Flipboard. But they've, like I said, they've already got the pipes. And one of the big criticisms against Flipboard, of course, is that it's scraping content, right? Uh, but here, with you know, it'd be interesting to see how Google's able to pull it off uh, that that criticism has been leveled against them at news.google.com uh, from from the likes of Rupert Murdoch and others, but uh, taking content when it's really not. They're linking to content. So uh, uh, here <laughs> here's the uh, Google of uh, the Google ad for another product Google supposedly launching tomorrow. How much did they pay for this? Do you think? Look at that. It was worth it. It was well worth it. Yeah. Over. <laughs> <laughs> now is that actually from the Seinfeld episode? Yes. Yeah, that was one of the final seasons, oh, season really? nine. It's like that. It was wearing the same. So, thing. so all they had same to do is, you know, just add that one little yeah, thing just of add the flyer, the flyer of Google Wallet. <laughs> so, uh, tell us about Google Wallet. Alexia, it is tell us about Google. It's your article. And, 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 tell us about Google Wallet. <laughs> what do you know? It's, I know that it's using NFC. Let's see. It's likely a, launching near tomorrow. field communications, which is, alas, only in like two phones, one of them a Google phone. So it's a direct competitor of Square's uh, card case? Yeah, except that if you. They'll integrate offers. If you have it on your phone, you just wave your phone. Yeah, I used card case, which is not uh, NFC, but I mean, it uses GPS. It's pretty. Pretty cool. Actually, card in. case, you just walk in the sight glass, yeah. and they say, "Oh, hi, David. Your coffee's waiting." Well, for you, you you basically check in almost. You like I'm right. here, David. and then when you're done, you just tell them your name. They say, "Okay." Yeah, we got it. it. Yeah, I, I love I that idea. I can't wait myself. You know, I I can't wait to get rid of my wallet. Do you have a big? You no, no, no. George yeah, stands a wallet. No, no, it's not, it's not big. It's, oh, that's not bad. It's not bad. Mar 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 but Mar I wanted to remind you like that we it. reviewed Card Case on, on App Judgment and Revision 3. I love okay. Card Case. I think it's a great idea, except that you can't, nobody can use it. In fact, the funny thing is because it's GPS based, you can't have two stores next to each other using Card Case. They actually have to separate the stores. Oh, really? Yeah. Because it's well, GPS based. Well, Think about more, it. Okay, so if, if Google Wallet is NFC, and when more and more phones are NFC as well, which they will be, then I guess that would be a moot point, right? Well, the nice thing about the NFC is it's very it. short range. NFC, you got to get right. Can up you next transmit to it. data on NFC? No, it's right. It's right next to it. I'm not sure. Hmm. I mean, it's it's like another version of an RFID. No, it's even shorter range than RFID. Wow. So, and one of the things you can do with NFC is you can put a sticker. Mm -hmm. An NFC sticker on a, on a phone that doesn't support it. So I expect when they launch it, they will be giving out stickers. <laughs> I don't know. Giving, there's one, that one phone, the Nexus S. The Nexus S has, has it. That's right. Does your uh, Galaxy 2 have it? No. I'm asking Eileen. <clears throat> but the new one should. The one's coming out. The Sprint one might have one. The Sprint one just came out yesterday, the uh, Galaxy 2. I'm I, sure that the iPhone 5 will have it, right? It's Will it? To. It's got to. It's got you should to add some more screens to it. But doesn't Apple that. hate yeah. Google? <laughs> Won't Apple do everything they can to put yeah, NFC out of business? There. I mean, I don't know. if if Google Wallet exists, doesn't Apple do everything they can to who kill owned, it? Who, who, who created the standard? For NFC? Yeah. I don't know. It doesn't matter because if you do a Google Wallet, it's not going to be an open wallet. <laughs> Right? It's a good way to it can't say. be because you gotta you oh, gotta good. have a you gotta have an API. <laughs> I mean, think about how many people do not have a passcode lock on their phone, right? Like if you live in New York City, it's you better have one because you're gonna leave you're gonna leave your phone in a car, right. uh, on a you know all the time. But I mean, I would love to have something like this on my phone mm. to get on the subway on a regular basis. Like today, I paid at uh, Starbucks with the uh, the Starbucks mobile right. app on my iPhone. Um, Even when uh, you you. Uh, it, I can't remember which airline. Is it Virgin? That ha allows yeah. you to use the barcode on yeah, your phone. That's so cool. Right they don't have to print out a boarding pass. 
I just have it on my phone and I wave but it. But will this be, uh, you know, will people use it? I mean, that's, that's, we saw that with Google Health, right? My, my wife still uh, laments the death of Google Health. That she put, you know, all of her Marissa health documents laments. over there. And she, I did and, too. You know, I did too. And it's gone, right? And yeah. so will people take to this and put all of their credit card information in here? Will they, will people actually take to it? Hey, speaking of uh, your wife and your child, you're a parent. Uh, Loic, you're a parent, I'm a parent. What do you think of this? The Federal Trade Commission is proposing revisions to the Children's Online Privacy Protection Act, COPPA, uh, to, and I think anybody who runs a website is going to be a little bit nervous about this, to prevent websites from collecting track, tracking information about people under 13. That would include cookies and geolocation. If you have a kid under 13 going to a site, that site will have to secure parental consent before using tracking cookies. Now, I understand the desire to protect kids online, but a number of people have said, pointed out, <laughs> every site in the world uses browser cookies. How are we going to, de does this mean that before you can use any site, we're going to have to do an age check? This, this, could, break never happen. The, this could break the web. This will never happen. I agree. Mm. I mean, this is not going to pass the smell test. You think, you think when you get a couple of companies sitting in front of Congress explaining, like, you can imagine Amazon every before you visit Amazon, which may, may there's questionable content on Amazon or thing. You're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna have to click on something that says you're age appropriate before you actually get in. That would mean the entire web. You would have to click before you get in. I mean, the argument is that these companies have hundreds of millions of dollars in funding, so that they should figure it out technologically. Because it's more important that that you protect kids than you have a couple of seconds of uh, you know delay in entering a site. I'd like to know what they mean by these browser tracking cookies, however, because for all browsers, all websites set cookies, which could ostensibly be used to track. I mean, mm -hmm. it's a unique ID. Uh, we set cookies. Every browser set. Every every website sets cookies. We set cookies. Does that mean that Twit before you'd be allowed to visit the Twit page, you'd have to prove you were Plus, 13? Yeah. How do you know, right? As a as an editor uh, or owner of a site, how do you know that? Like that you have to shut down or not put a cookie to someone. It's really just difficult to implement. I think here, the way you implement it is very simple. That you put a tracking device on children, mm. <laughs> right? And as soon as, like a NFC, device. a collar. <laughs> it doesn't matter. And as soon as they go near a computer, it shuts off. Well, aren't exactly like <laughs> Willow the cat, which uh, I don't know if you saw Willow the cat, which had a, a chip in its neck this week, and for five years ago vanished from Colorado, wound up in New York, and they found it because of the little chip in its neck. I love that. That's like Homeward Bound. That's I just don't right. get it. I isn't, I don't get it. Why did the cat walk to New York? <laughs> what the hell is going on? The pizza. Can't get that pizza in <laughs> You're right. This cat is smart. <laughs> you know, I saw this story and I thought, what, what, how do they know it's the same cat? Maybe it's just another calico. It's a chip. They knew because yeah, of we the chip. Had, we had, in fact, the owners weren't there. We had the cat on the show today. Uh, <laughs> really? Our, our, That's amazing. Our, our, our level of guests, let me just tell you. We, I mean, it's <laughs> Coming up on Fox and Friends, Willow the Cat. We've got a llama. We've got a llama and, a, and Willow the Cat. Uh, but no, they didn't even have the owners there yet. The, the, somebody had found the cat, ran the, the scanner on the chip and found out that the owners lived in Colorado. They were flying there to the city to pick up the cat. It was like the, the local ASPCA, whatever, had the cat and was able to scan its neck. <laughs> you know, it gives good hope. It gives hope to all cat owners who've lost a cat. I've lost cats. That maybe the cat didn't get run. I always assume the cat got run over or found a new owner. Maybe they're just walking to New York. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like mid Midnight Cowboy. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's talking at talking me. talking at me. Five-year walk. Homeward Bound? Have you seen Homeward Yes, Homeward Bound. Bound. Okay. That's the story. That's the story. But it's a dog and a cat, right? It's Chansey and Shadow. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> okay. Glad I provided NFC. a rabble. Have I told you about Netflix.com <laughs> slash Twitter? All right. We're, we're uh, so glad that you all were here. We have a, uh, I just love having a, a party with Loic, bringing the wine. It just makes it so much fun. Loic uh, Lemur is at seismic.com. Leweb.net is coming up soon. Uh, and you're inviting all European entrepreneurs and uh, people who are interested in startups to go, aren't you? Uh, of course. Of course. But if you can't get to Paris <laughs> this December, you can always watch it you, on Twit. And you can watch it, yeah, online. You stream actually all we the time. You know, it's it's kind of fun yeah. because what you're already doing is, and you have done for some years, is streaming the event itself. Yeah. We're going to be backstage. We'll do the backstage stream. Which never happened, which will be amazing. That's going to be so much the, fun. The stage got a quarter of a million 
viewers last Ooh, year. That's awesome. Because it's all you know free and worldwide. So. Leo's gonna live crowd surf. Right? No, not on the web. Well, you're <laughs> going to, it's going to be amazing because the, the stage is only like 20 minutes, so you're going to have more time with the speakers you want. I think it's going to be really great. Be awesome. I'm really looking we'll forward to that. Too. You've always done a great job of streaming it. With you know, Last time you had backstage cameras, you had cameras everywhere. It's just really fun to watch the streaming event. Uh, and then have the Twit uh, feed on the, as well. It will be Twit in Paris in December. Uh, Mr. Uh, David Prager. Prager! Mm -hmm. Revision3.com. Always great to have you. Thank you Thanks for coming. Thanks for having me again. Out here. Uh, we appreciate it. I know it's a bit of a drive. Alexia Tsotsis, they're saying in the chat room, you should have Alexia on more, and I couldn't agree more. We'll get you the root beer if you'll come visit. Awesome. Great. Just get me a pipeline, a root beer pipe. Root beer pi you could just shoot the root beer direct. Did you see, <laughs> by the way, I'm going to end with this, and thank you also uh, for being here, uh, Clayton. Great to have Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Make sure you get that chip on your uh, kid, okay? <laughs> well, we, we're getting injected next week. Yeah, if he walks, to, if, he, if he walks here, uh, <laughs> we just want to be able to identify him 100. Uh, percent Stevie Scanners Wonder now. performing in Echo Park uh, last night. Let me see if I can pull this up because I have to skip in on this clip about f about 4:40 in on this clip, mm. um, and I'm sure I'm going to get in trouble. You know, we got pulled down because. Really? Could you talk to uh, Rupert for me? Uh, Clayton, because we got t we got pulled down because we played some Simpsons content last week. We got pulled <laughs> off of YouTube. Can you just do something for me? I'll give him a call. Would you? Rupert. So, this is uh, Stevie Wonder in Echo Park. I don't know if you can understand him. We can make this happen. And I want you to give a hand to someone that you know. His health is very bad at this time. But for someone who, if his company took the challenge in making his technology accessible to everyone, in the spirit of caring and moving the world forward, Steve Jobs. I think that's pretty awesome. Stevie Wonder acknowledging Apple for because the... Because there's nothing on the iPhone or the iPad that you can do that I can't do. Acknowledging <laughs> Apple for their accessibility and, uh, and rightly so. I can be talking to you, you can be looking at me, and I can be doing whatever I need to do, and you don't even know what I'm doing. Apparently he's a FaceTime yeah. user, too. <laughs> <laughs> so pretty awesome. That's uh, Stevie Wonder from an Echo Park concert uh, last night. I thought that was great. Where and should so find that? I'm posting that on TechCrunch. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. Isn't that awesome? Uh, that's uh, LA Times. Wow. They're a newspaper. You probably heard of them. Uh, really, really kind of neat. <laughs> Thank you all for uh, joining us. Ahead. Say again? The week ahead. Oh, we have that? I'm so sorry. We do. You know, one of the things we like to do uh, at, at, during Twit is to take a look at show, stories that are be coming up uh, in the week mm -hmm. ahead. And, of course, you know that we'll be covering those stories with Tom Merritt on Tech News Today every weekday, 2.30 Pacific, 5.30 Eastern on twit.tv. And, Tom, what's coming up this week? Hey, thanks, Leo. Here's a look at some of the stories we'll be checking on in the week ahead on Tech News Today. Uh, it's a big day today for AT&T, actually. They're unveiling the Impulse 4G for 30 bucks. Nice cheap phone. The Acer Iconia Tab A501 with HSPA Plus available on contract. The Xperia Play 4G comes to AT&T. And the big announcement, they're officially launching LTE service in five cities. Tomorrow, Monday, September 19th, is International Talk Like a Pirate Day. So if you're still enjoying that meme... Have a good day. <laughs> Tuesday, September 20th, Gears of War's limited edition Arr. Xbox 360 is coming, and HTC has a press event in New York City where they will, quote, celebrate in style. It's Fashion Week in New York. Expect some good-looking phones. Wednesday, September 21st, is the AT&T T-Mobile merger hearing, and also the U.S. Senate holding the power of Google hearing, starring Eric Schmidt. And Thursday, September 22nd, begins the Facebook F8 developer conference. Lots of rumors that they'll be launching a music service there. Mm -hmm. So that's a look at the week ahead. Back to you, Leo. Thank you, Tom. We will be covering the uh, Facebook F8 <coughs> conference live. Uh, that's at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern on twit.tv this coming Thursday. Tom and I will be doing live coverage. Make sure you uh, tune in for that. Thank you all for being here. We'll see you next week. Another twit is in the can. This is amazing.